Um, as we said, you've already been doing a lot of the techniques, we just haven't given them names. So I'm going to start to name some of the things that you're doing. <clears throat> but um, the first technique that we named already, and that was holds. So whenever you approach holds, uh, the idea is to come down really quite slowly so that you can feel as you're entering that space, whatever you want to call it, energy field space. All living, all living things have a definite energy field. Whether or not you believe in any of the other things that I believe in, all living things have an energy field that's measurable by Curlian photography. And so if you, if you begin to do this quite slowly, you can often feel when you're kind of in a space. And, and actually, it's a soft landing. Did you notice that? My hands really land very softly. Um, there are some massage techniques, um, craniosacral techniques, that use only five grams of pressure. Do you know how much five grams of pressure is? To say that again. No, 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 no. Five, five. It, it's actually a twenty pence piece. So imagine the weight of a twenty pence piece, and that's that's all that you would apply. Okay. So we can go really lightly, or we can use our bodies to just sink into the tissues a little bit more. And what we know is wherever my hands are, the person I'm working on, that's where their attention is. So very often when you finish working on a back neck area, you might well use holds down to the feet to give them a sense of their whole body again. So holds are really, really useful and what we saw before was if you stay long enough with a hold, very often people let go of a lot of tension without you doing anything more. <coughs> and it's a great opportunity for me to check out my body use and my breathing and to do those things we talked about which is just to get out of my own way. I want to get out of my head. I want to get into feeling, I want my attention, my focus to be on my receiver and not on whether I know a technique or not. Do you understand that? Yeah. The other thing I mentioned before is the Hara spotlight and I pointed to my tummy probably but I didn't really explain the Hara. So the Hara is an area uh, just below the belly button and that's the area that I'm talking about with this kind of spotlight. It's an energy area. Uh, the the uh, martial arts people would call this area the Tan Dien. Anybody do martial arts? Diane left. Diane left. She goes. Oh, okay. Shame she's left. <laughs> um, but it, if you just think about this area of your belly, what I'm suggesting is if you imagine a spotlight from this area, if I move, if I want to work here, then my spotlight needs to be in line. As soon as I move my spotlight in line, my whole body needs to change. So that front foot is facing where I'm going. The back foot is a little bit further apart. So I can now move in that direction. Does that make sense? And the same is if I'm pulling, I'm going to be exactly behind where I'm pulling. I can't pull in that direction and have my body here. It just doesn't work. Everything, this is what we're talking about in terms of alignment. Your body is aligned with whatever you're doing. So they're the principles. So I, and this holds, I'm already noticing things about Juju's body here. Okay? Um, I've just looked to see if I'm right about it, but my hand's already sensing and feeling different things. And I can feel and sense that, and you can probably see, that the right side here is more prominent than the left. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So these holds are not just so that you can connect, but they also give your hands a lot of information. I'm feeling the contours. So I already know an awful lot before I've even taken the towel off. And take the towel off. Take the 
take it down. And that, by the way, there's nothing unusual about that. People's bodies are quite as um, not symmetrical. Is that asymmetrical? Okay, this is going to be a great thing to have on the film. <laughs> All right, yes, I've got it now. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. I didn't ask you, I'm sorry, I meant to ask you. <coughs> Um, I'm just checking uh, there uh, because I noticed something and we haven't talked about contraindications yet. So I'm just checking whether there's anything I need to know that would affect the massage I'm about to give. So again, the amount of oil is going to be about 10 pp's, 50 pp's. I'm going to put that between my two hands. And actually what I'm going to do is just spread this oil. I'm going to, again, soft landing, and there is nothing in any of this spreading that you haven't already done, have you? There's nothing here. I want a fairly even amount of oil everywhere. I could also have started that oiling from the top and worked down easily, okay? And that actually was the technique I'm about to show you. But before I go into that, I just want to try the oiling. So I want an even amount of oil throughout the back. Some of you ask, what do you do if it's getting dry and you need to apply more oil? Well, what you need to do, as much as it's a soft landing, you want it to be a soft release as well so that there feels like there's some completion of that stroke. If I show the, the opposite of that, I can roughly go on and roughly come off. What does that feel like? Horrible. <laughs> it feels horrible, okay? How you make and break that connection means it's going, you know that trust? We were talking about building the trust. So there's me taking more oil, soft, flowing and I can break that connection but we don't break it so that's the interesting thing I can come off here and go on again and I have not broken that connection between us have I there's no break in that connection believe it or not so it's better to take your hands off and move sometimes and know that actually when you go on again as softly as you came off, there's no problem with that. Okay with that? I'm show you a couple other things as well because effleurage can be as light as feathering. As light as feathering. Not everybody likes feathering. Sometimes it's a little bit too light for people. Or you can just bring your whole hand in contact and it can be stroking. Effleurage means skimming the surface. Effleurage, the French word, means skimming the surface. But the truth is, with effleurage, we can actually go quite deeply. I'm going to show you a, an effleurage technique, which I like. So hands in the center of the back here. We're going to go down. We're going to come back up. Notice the push-pull down on over the shoulders, round the shoulders and pull through. So it's down, back up. Notice the position of my body as I come over and push down onto the shoulders and round and pull through. One more time, down. Notice how, remember that alive and sensing and moulding the hands all the way around the body. You could add another bit in there, I call this the eye, across there, back, across there. Can you see how that's an eye? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> I call this the T, but uh, draw causes it, calls it a diamond, so it doesn't really matter what it's called. 
whatever works for you as an image. So sometimes you're coming up and round both sides. Um, and you know that stroking that we did, we could do any of that kind of stroking. Pulling towards you, this is also called a pulling stroke. So already, and that pulling motion can do side to side. And notice how the body has to move behind what I'm doing. So the body leads the movement. Okay, so that's that. And I've done now a side to side. Coming to the side of the feet. Same effleurage stroke I can use in all sorts of ways. This is all effleurage. One hand side by side or I can put one hand on top of the other. I'm starting to add a little bit more depth at this point. One hand on top of the other. You've done this, right? You've already done this. And what some of you were doing, what a lot of you were doing, was going over to the other shoulder and pulling through. I'm going to swap my hands there because it feels like I need to. Yeah, that feels better. A lot of it is what feels right. I can do either way. Actually, no, that one's better. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't really matter. And I can do that pulling from here, but it's not the same on my body. So I'd rather stick with the shoulder opposite. That pulling movement is the same here. This is all still kind of effleurage. I'm still doing effleurage. Either one hand on top of the other or one hand side by side. Do you like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So from there. We're going to go to petrissage movement. Do you know what petrissage means? What it, what the movement entails? Anybody? It's a little quicker. Huh? A little quicker. No, it's not necessarily quicker. I could do any of what I've just done quicker. Although I'm not sure why I would, but I can. If I do it quicker, I can really warm the tissues up better. That happen? Yeah, warming out. <coughs> I can warm up the tissues easier if I do it quicker. But actually, the deeper you go, the slower you go. And the general format is light strokes, medium strokes, deeper strokes, back out to light again. So I'm starting quite light, and then I'm going to add the uh, pressure with different things that I do. Petrissage is picking up, squeezing and squeezing the tissues against themselves, okay? So here is a simple one for you. This is kind of a kneading stroke. So can you see I'm actually picking up and squeezing the tissues as I go? I could actually kind of roll around here. So squeezing and rolling, yeah? Squeezing, rolling. I can squeeze and roll in there as well. I could come here and see where else I can squeeze and roll. She hasn't got much spare flesh actually. <laughs> so, uh, you know, for some people you can find a lot more tissue to pick up and squeeze around. What do you think about... <clears throat> Because at this point, I'm picking up squeezing tissues around. If I have too much oil, it's actually really difficult to do that. So if you smother your client in oil, you can never get that grip that you need for petrissage. So I'm going to go through a few things again with you. So from here, we, we spread the oil. We did this kind of tea or diamond shape. We did an eye shape. We stroked from side to side. I came to the side. I can work side by side with my hands. I can work one on top of the other. 
And if I want to, I can lean back and work on that shoulder. I'm staying this side, by the way, just because you're all that side and that's where the camera is, but obviously I can swap that around. Go forward and back. You've done all this, right? Am I showing you anything you haven't already done in your own ways? <laughs> Nothing, right? So these are all effleurage strokes coming into the petrissage, picking up, squeezing, rolling around. And if I was going back to light again, I might do some more kind of effleurage. It's a bit difficult from the side. I can't twist my body with it. But what I could do from here, if I want to bring this to a close, some of the lighter stroking. Notice the body use all the way through. The body just flows with whatever I'm doing. <coughs> so that's a start. What do you think? Oh, you can cut now. 